Hey everyone, Eric Stackelbeck here. Today on the newscast, Hezbollah's secret missile depot exposed. Plus, is the Iranian regime targeting U.S. forces in Iraq once again? Get all the breaking details coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu dropped a bombshell in his speech during the UN General Assembly this week, exposing a secret Hezbollah missile depot in Beirut. Plus, are Iranian-backed militias in Iraq targeting U.S. forces? Once again, very dangerous situation. We've got all the breaking details for you today. Before we get into it, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. We are bringing you the kind of cutting edge, timely information that you just won't hear anywhere else. Certainly not in the mainstream media. Okay, let's get into it. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, really a tour de force performance the other day, virtually in front of the UN General Assembly, making the case once again against the Iranian regime and its most deadly proxy Hezbollah with once again, and Prime Minister Netanyahu is known to do this during his UN General Assembly speeches every September, once again, providing specific proof and details about what Iran and its proxies are up to. This time, Hezbollah, Prime Minister Netanyahu, laid out a very convincing case, including maps showing that Hezbollah right now has a top-secret missile depot right near the Beirut International Airport. Obviously, civilians passing through there, right? Not only that, it's in a civilian area or adjacent to a civilian area in Beirut. Not only that... This missile depot is right next to a gas station. Talk about a flammable situation, pun intended. Folks, look, think back to early August, August 4th to be exact, the Beirut blast at the port of Beirut, which Hezbollah controls, where a huge stockpile, tons of ammonium nitrate went up in flames, killed hundreds of people, wounded thousands more, destroyed entire neighborhoods in Beirut. A lot of people are saying, hey, Hezbollah had some kind of hand in that, probably unintentionally. Hezbollah knew that the ammonium nitrate was at the Beirut port. They had it there for safekeeping. Clearly, they probably intended it to use it in future terror attacks, as we've shared here on the Watchman Newscast. And you can check in our archives, including just last week. Hezbollah is also stockpiling ammonium nitrate throughout Europe. Now, the mainstream media is not talking about this. I think, call me crazy, I think it's a very important story that you need to know. So, it was great to see Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, once again provide specifics. It's in that neighborhood in Beirut, this Hezbollah missile depot where they're stockpiling God knows what. It's in the neighborhood called Jana, near Beirut International Airport. Uh, just a very dangerous situation, folks, to say the least. And who knows? What kind of missiles are in this depot? Thank God the Israel Defense Forces clearly know where it is in Beirut. But we've been telling you here in the newscast as well about these precision-guided munitions, right? PGMs for short, which the Iranian regime is trying to supply to Hezbollah in Lebanon. They're transiting the parts for these missiles through Syria into southern Lebanon, at least they are attempting to do that. Thankfully, the Israeli Air Force has had something to say about that. They have carried out several strikes in Syria over the past few years, targeting convoys which were transiting these precision-guided munition parts across Syria, ostensibly into the hands of Hezbollah in southern Lebanon at Israel's doorstep. And folks, why are precision-guided munitions so dangerous. It's real easy. They do exactly what their name says. They are precision guided, so they have greater accuracy. If you think back to the 2006 Israel-Hezbollah war, Hezbollah fired thousands of rockets into Israel, uh, killed dozens of people, shut down large sections of northern Israel, like the beautiful city of Kiryat Shemona, but those missiles didn't necessarily have great accuracy. Precision guided missiles, on the other hand, are a major game changer. And in interviewing Israel Defense Forces officials over the past several months, I can tell you that next to Iran's nuclear weapons program, the precision guided missile or munition threat 
is 1A on the IDF's list of major threats to Israel and to the entire region, by the way. Think back to just one year ago, September 2019, when Iran, with a combination of drones and missiles, targeted Saudi oil fields and affected a good chunk of the world's oil supply, a very dangerous, unprecedented situation. So these missiles not only affect Israel, and that's a key point we try to make here on the newscast, folks, on a regular basis, Iran, the Iranian regime, Hezbollah, Hamas, they're, that whole axis, they're not just Israel's problem. They have designs on the entire region. Here's a great example. Just this week, a top Iranian defense official said that wherever Israel, the Zionist entity, whatever nation is opposing the Zionist entity, we will be by their side. Now, what does that mean? He got specific about it. He talked about Iran's support for the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, weapons, training, everything else, advisors. He didn't say, hey, we're giving the Houthis missiles as well, but come on. We've seen the Houthis out of Yemen fire missiles at Saudi Arabia on several occasions over the past few years. I'll give you two guesses where those missiles are coming from. Iran has the most active missile, ballistic missile program, precision guided munition program in the entire Middle East. So what I'm saying, it doesn't just affect Israel. It's because, look, the Iranian regime is not only opposed to Israel, wants to wipe Israel off the map, opposes Israel's very existence. We know that very well. By the way, the existence of the United States as well. I'm an American. I'm here in the United States. There's a reason the Iranian regime refers to Israel as the little Satan and America as the great Satan, because the United States is the ultimate target. We have a bullseye on our backs right here on U.S. soil as well. Don't get it twisted. So... It's not just Israel's problem. Hey, there's also a bullseye on the back of the Sunni Arab nations like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt. Of course, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain right now. The Iranian regime is furious with them. They just meet, made peace with Israel two weeks ago. I was at the White House signing ceremony. History was made. So it's not just a threat to Israel. It's a threat to the broader region. I mentioned Yemen, right? The Iranian regime has a presence, effectively controls Yemen. Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. The Iranian, the shadow coming from Tehran, the dark shadow over the entire region spreads far and wide. This is not just Israel's problem. Now, speaking of Iran's problems, and if you think, oh, Stackelbeck, it's just exaggeration. What can Iran do to the United States? Well, our Kurdish friends uh, in Erbil, in northern Iraq, Iraqi Kurdistan, where I had a great production trip for the Watchman TV show just last year. Some Kurdish representatives announced this week that some six missiles were fired targeting the Erbil airport in northern Iraq in Iraqi Kurdistan. Now, these missiles, according to the Kurds, were fired by an Iranian-backed militia, Hashad al-Shabi, which has targeted U.S. forces in the past. Why is this a problem? Number one, because the Kurds are our allies, but number two, from an American perspective as well, because U.S. forces are stationed in and around Erbil and not far from that airport. I believe this was a message from the Iranian regime. It was not a successful attack, but yet again, a flare-up. Look, the regime has made very clear they are not satisfied. The death of Qasem Soleimani last January at the hands of U.S. forces Good riddance, the not-so-dearly-departed terror master from Iran. The Iranian regime has said, look, we are still seeking revenge for that. Uh, a likely theater for that revenge would be in Iraq, where U.S. forces are stationed, perhaps even Afghanistan. Iran has deep ties there as well in Afghanistan. So be on the lookout for these kinds of attacks. You probably didn't hear this in the mainstream media. But again, folks... What looks like a small flare-up or a relatively small incident in the Middle East, this region is a powder keg, right? It could set the whole region on fire. What looks like a small clash or a small exchange of fire has much broader implications in the Middle East, folks. And what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East. Speaking of radical, tyrannical terror actors in the Middle East, as we wrap up here... Gave you the lowdown on Hezbollah, gave you the lowdown on Turkey. By the way, or lowdown on Iran, I'm going to tell you about Turkey in a minute. But when we're talking about Lebanon, hey, I said this on the last newscast, I'll say it again. Please 
pray for the people of Lebanon who are under the boot of Hezbollah and, by extension, the Iranian regime, Hezbollah's master. The economy there is in shambles. It's in tatters. We had, obviously, the Beirut blast about two months ago, destroyed a large chunk of Lebanon's capital city. You have um, jihadist forces there led by Hezbollah with an intimidating presence, intimidating not only their co-religionists, fellow Muslims, but intimidating Lebanese Christians, perched on Israel's border. It is a very nasty situation. There are some rumblings, by the way, encouraging rumblings. I was just reading before I came on here with you today on the newscast that Lebanon, the Lebanese government, and Israel may have talks in the near future concerning some of these maritime issues in the Mediterranean that we've been telling you about. There's a lot of uh, natural gas there in the Mediterranean uh, off the shore of Israel and Lebanon that's being contested right now. And guess one of the dangerous actors who I teased a minute ago who's contesting all that natural gas? You guessed it. Recep Erdogan, the president of Turkey. As we leave you real quick, I just want you to know that we've talked about Erdogan extending his reach uh, across the Middle East once again, trying to be the new caliph, trying to revive the Ottoman Empire. You have the Persian Empire track led by the Iranian regime, who wants to revive the former Persian Empire. Then you have the Ottoman track, led by Erdogan. Now, sometimes he will collaborate with the Iranian regime, Hezbollah, Hamas, clearly. But other times, Erdogan stakes out his own path. He wants to be the man. He wants to be the strong man in the Middle East. That's why he's involved in Syria, Iraq, Libya, uh, in that Mediterranean dispute over natural gas there and who controls what. He's threatened Greece. He's threatened France. And now... Just give you an idea of his regional ambitions. Turkey is sending, reportedly, jihadists, Syrian jihadists mostly, mercenaries, I guess you would call them, into uh, Armenia, Azerbaijan, into that conflict that is flaring up right now between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, Erdogan is backing Azerbaijan. He's apparently sending fighters to assist them against Armenia. You know, Turkey and Armenia, folks, kind of a sensitive history. You think back to the Armenian genocide, some one million Armenians at least slaughtered by the Turks about a little over 100 years ago. So there's a history there. The Turkish regime denies uh, the Armenian genocide, tries to uh, take a pass on it, say, hey, it didn't happen and it wasn't like that. We know what happened. The historical records and the archives stand. So once again, Turkey getting involved in Armenia and, and Azerbaijan. Keep an eye on that. That is a conflict that could flare up as well. Just north of the Middle East and Iran is Armenia, Azerbaijan. I should really have a map. It's funny, on the comments, someone said, you should put a map in that monitor behind you. Perhaps I will now that we have this nice monitor behind me. That's a really good idea. But keep an eye on Azerbaijan and Armenia. Again, these events that happen over there, thousands of miles away, affect us no matter where we live. Keep an eye on it. So... That's your Middle East Roundup for the day. Never a dull moment, right, in the world's most pivotal, important, and chaotic region. Hey, before we go, I just wanted to mention, number one, make sure to subscribe. Tell your friends, your family members, your neighbors, your coworkers. Subscribe to the news channel here on YouTube. We are fast approaching 100,000 subscribers. We are very excited about that. We want to reach more and more people around the world with this message for such a time as this right now. We live in perilous times, but we also live in Bible times, and we think you'd rather know than not know what is happening in the Middle East and beyond and how it affects you no matter where you live. So be sure to give us a subscribe and tell your friends to do so as well and click the notif notification bell so you get alerts when we post these videos with these breaking updates that you're really not gonna hear anywhere else. Uh, number two, remember, about two weeks ago, I believe, check out our archives here in the newscast on YouTube, but we announced a great partnership, a collaboration we we're doing with our good friends at Artsa with the Artsa boxes. Remember, I did an unboxing here. It was a lot of fun on the Watchman newscast. It is a seasonal subscription. There are four boxes per year that come from Artsa, our very good friends, and the latest box is from Nazareth. Hey, if you've never been to the Holy Land, you've never been to Israel, uh, or you, you were there years ago, you haven't gotten back, or the COVID travel restrictions have pre prevented you from going like me. I'm usually there every three months. I'm very fortunate and blessed to have that opportunity. But 
these boxes are for you no matter where you are. If you're just longing for Israel, if you've never been to Israel, this is a taste, a smell, a sight uh, of Israel all in this one box in the Arts of Box. So go to www.artsofbox.com. Use the discount code WATCHMAN15. That's WATCHMAN15 at artsofbox.com. You see the information there on your screen. It's also in the description underneath this video. I can't recommend it enough, folks. Just high quality products, Israeli made from Israeli artisans uh, in and around Nazareth for this, for this season. Bethlehem, uh, Jerusalem, and Galilee are coming, on, coming up as well as the next several months go on. But right now, the box that Arts is offering is from Nazareth. Hey, I only uh, partner with products that I believe in. You are supporting the Israeli economy. You are fulfilling that biblical mandate, Genesis 12, 3, to bless Israel and the Jewish people. Right now, Israel is struggling mightily with COVID-19. There is a national lockdown in Israel right now. Everything is shut down once again. The case numbers are apparently soaring of COVID-19 in Israel. A lot of small businesses, the very small businesses that make the kind of products that Arta is offering in these wonderful boxes, they're struggling right now. So you want to bless Israel? You want to fulfill that biblical mandate? I can't think of a better way than supporting Israeli artisans uh, and the Israeli economy through getting an Arts of Box subscription. And again, use that Watchman discount code, Watchman15, at artsofbox.com. Enjoy. And hey, Christmas is coming up. Perfect, perfect gift for the Zionist in your household to get them an Arts of Box subscription. Watchman15 is the discount code. Thank you. For joining us today, folks. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.